Hello folks, let's build a vintage airplane the old fashioned way and then put a Wankel rotary engine on it to boot. These are the items required to build and finish this airplane in addition to the price of the kit. And you're going to need a radio too. You know, back in the day when RC airplanes were in their infancy, John Donovan, the founder of Donovan's Hobby and Scuba Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, began manufacturing these small flying wings. They were used to combat each other. Well, it was an ingenious design, including the building materials. And since there were no transmitter mixer in those days, it had a sliding tray mechanism which had to work perfectly. Well, with an Elevon mixer in my DX6i, it made the radio installation a little easier. Also, there was no recommended engine size mentioned in the plans or on the box, so I decided to put one of my favorite and smoothest engines on it, the OS Wankel Rotary Engine. So enjoy this bit of history and how things had to be built before the day of instant foam airplanes all ready to fly right out of the box. This is one of my unfavorite tasks in building. That's covering the machine. In the beginning there was monocoat and it was great and it took the place of silk, clear dope and painting, let alone the smell and all the work. But it took quite a skill to get it as good as paint, but nonetheless it was easier. Well later came solar film covering and I liked that. I never used Ultra Coat before today, but must say it really shrinks nicely. It did not have a tendency to burn a hole through requiring a restart, so I, I like this stuff a lot. When I did the wing, I cut the covering to shape and ironed all the way around the edges first, trying to keep the Ultra Coat as taut as possible. Once that was done, I used my heat cut to shrink up the entire wing while remembering that there is foam under the covering and not to melt it. You know, a standard way of mounting the wings to the fuselages back in the day was to glue in hardwood blocks where needed then drill and tap them for quarter 20 nylon bolts to hold the wing on. If there was a crash, the bolts would break, saving lots more damage. Oh, this plane was designed to be flown without a landing gear, but I decided instead of hand launching and wristing a face plant of my $450 Wankel engine, I would devise a set of landing gear and use the front bolt as a mount. I also needed a nose wheel that would steer but still allow me to slide in my motor tank battery throttle servo module which I also designed. Next is another task I wish was easier. You know SIG manufacturing has been around since the beginning and they make good stuff but I think their easy hinges leave a lot to be desired. Even with the proper slot cut the edges separated while trying to put it all together. I've used other round hinges that are easier to use than the square ones and they don't fray like the SIG ones did on the corners. Another company that's been around a long time is Dubro. I like all their stuff, but again, putting on the control horns always requires a steady hand, as for some reason they keep supplying slotted screws instead of Phillips heads. Any of you who ever had the screwdriver slide off and go right through the control surface surely will relate. Here's a closer look at my motor module. my power switch on the right hand side uh, that way the exhaust from the uh, which is going to be on the other side won't get in the way next I made the hatch cover as per plan I think it could use smaller screws but nonetheless it's ingenious I used amazing goop to glue on the rubber silicone tube which I use for rubber bumpers front makes it a little more snug Next the dual rudders need to be bolted on. It's best to do this last as it is necessary to see where to drill the holes without drilling through a servo. Everything was designed to be easily replaced as there's usually more than one combat heat so quick change was always necessary. Make sure when you're all done there's no clearance problems and nothing's rubbing against screws or bolts or wires. This is a typical glow engine installation and just a glimpse but let's go ahead and switch it over and put that Wankel engine in. Here's my power module with the engine, tank, battery and the throttle servo. I had to rotate the engine to get the throttle work with this fuselage and motor mount design, but you can see how it works. I just push it in and with a couple of wood screws through the bottom of the fuselage, it's all secure.
First I'm going to run the engine to make sure all is well. The best part about this engine, besides the amazing power, 1.2 horsepower at 20,000 RPM, is that there's no low end needle valve adjustment. And it makes it easy to set. Sucker is fast. is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Good job, John Donovan, in your honor, man. I love it. Holy mackerel. Look at that idol. Wow. Ha <laughs> ha. Stay tuned because the next flight will be even faster as I continue to lean out the mixture for this altitude without overheating the engine. 